Hi, my name's Eric, and this is a demo of RepoPrompt, but this one's a little different. So normally when I build these demos, I try to focus on certain features that I'm showing off. In this case, I wanna show you how I use RepoPrompt to build RepoPrompt, which has been a request for some time now. So what I'm gonna do is I've gone ahead and set up a, a task here, um, and this is to add the Grok API to the app. So if you're not familiar, RepoPrompt supports many a API providers. Um, it lets you do file edits and all kinds of stuff um, like the context builder using those APIs. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to show how to add one to this list. Some folks have been requesting Grok, so I want to make sure that we're ready for that Grok 3.5 when that comes. And uh, here we go. So I've gone ahead, just written this prompt, show what it's, what's, what it's entailing. Um, and then I'm going to then generate a list of files um, that matches what like the AI thinks are relevant for this task. So while it's running there, I'll just explain a little bit of what's happening. So repo prompt supports many things, um, including, you know, loading up your file directory. And I can go ahead and just pick things like this file here, um, open up the providers list and, and pick different providers like this one um, that I want to include in my prompt and that will increase the token total. Um, but what it also does is while it's, you know, when you open this up, um, if you have a pro license, it will scan your directory and create a code map. And those code maps allow AI models to basically reference them like the con using the context builder as among other things to find relevant information about those files within them. So it's basically like a really advanced AI powered search in your code map, uh, in your code directory, um, but with a compressed version of your total code base. So if I were to select everything here, um, you can see this is 7 million tokens, uh, which is far too much, but the code map is 85,000 tokens and there's a file tree and, and whatnot. So that's really, if you get to really big, you can actually split this up into parallel queries. So yeah, I almost can handle that, but we'll get onto that another time. Uh, great. So it basically searched through all of the files um, and it found you know, an interesting list. So basically I don't think these low priority um, lists are important. So we're going to filter those out. Um, and then what we've got here is the uh, custom provider. So these are all useful. I don't think this one's super useful, not super useful. Um, you know, these are these are fine. We can include them, um, but these high relevant ones are definitely important. So we're going to add these as the uh, basically the setup. We've got some examples showing the model how to work. Um, there is this one here that it didn't find, but it's understandable. Um, and um, factory, perfect. So that's pretty much the whole task list. Great, so we've got all of these files selected. Um, the AI model is able to get to work with this. Um, and this is around 60,000 tokens, great. Um, so what we're gonna do with this now is I'm gonna hit XML copy. And what this does uh, is it basically sets up a prompt that the AI model will be able to work with uh, to then create a list of changes um, and we'll be able to apply those uh, automatically. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this into AI Studio. Um, it's gonna run there and I'm gonna paste it in O3 as well just so it can get to work at the same time. I like to run tests and compare different um, responses from different models um, just to see you know which is best. So that's running now. So that's going to create a task list. It's gonna, it's gonna basically get to work. Um, and and what, what this did, so I, I selected these files, I added an XML prompt and, you know, if you use tools like Cursor or other, you know, AI coding tools, what you'll notice is that the AI models will, one, it'll find files. And so we've done that now with the context builder, but two, it will create a list of changes and, but it does that iteratively and using tool calls. But what we've done with our XML format is that we're able to go ahead and have a full list of changes kind of in one shot um, in a big XML file that we can then paste into the app and that will allow repo prompt to parse it and then distribute edits to different AI models. So you'll see what, what I mean by that in a second here. Um, so let's see. So O3 is also getting to work on this. Um, so it's basically explaining each file to edit. So the provider factory, you know, creating a Grok provider. Um, it's doing all of the work here. Um, and, and yeah, so it's just, it's just basically adding everything that we need. And I suspect that uh, Gemini is going to finish first and Gemini is generally the most detail oriented model, uh, that you can, you can find. Um, so we're letting that get to work and cook. Um, but I really like O3 as well because O3 is, is, is quite smart and will write really nice code. That's a little bit, uh, more thorough. It's just a little bit slower at getting that code done. So let's just see, 
Um, <laughs> it's outputting. Okay, great, it finished. Uh, so we're gonna do copy XML markdown. Uh, we're gonna paste that in. Great, so this is six edits. Um, great, so we're gonna open that up. And um, basically, here's what's happening. So for each of these files, Gemini said, here's what to change, add this, um, and depending on the file, uh, we're gonna pick a model to do the edits. So here it was DeepSeek that did it. Here it's Gemini Flash. Um, some of these you know, are gonna be quite large. Um, and some of these are a little smaller. So 17 changes in file. That's quite a lot of changes to this file. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see how it fares. So this is this is a lot of changes to do. Um, it's, it's still finishing up. We'll just there we go. So parse seven files. Great. So we've got the Grok provider, which we can see here. Um, we've got you know our key manager set up. We've done some changes here. Uh, we've added support for Grok um, as a provider with all of the setup here. Um, uh, API model. Uh, great. So we've done we've done some good work there. I'm going to hit copy here. So one thing with Xcode, if you're working with Xcode, is that it tends to have um, a few issues with creating files depending on your setup. So, but luckily we can just create that from the clipboard. Great. So we added that, um, and then for the rest we'll just update them, add all the changes here. Great. All the changes were merged. Now I don't know if this is going to work. First shot. I haven't tried this uh, before, so we'll see. Hopefully, oh, some some issues here. Um, and well, you know, <laughs> some some merge errors occurred here from the heavy edits, but that's fine. Let's just um, let's just prompt it again and say, um, let's just run through with um, let's just use four point one. So let's uh, here let's just clear that out, um, and we're just going to set API settings view model. Um, here, we'll put it on pro mode. We have a number of compiler issues from a bad merge here. Let's fix that up. So GPT 4.1 is a nice just uh, working model. So it's gonna run through and find uh, the various issues here. Um, and then hopefully, um, yeah, great. So three changes, great. We're gonna use DeepSeek to edit that and Okay, hopefully this is a bit of a vague instruction here. I'm a little worried about that one. <laughs> um, let's see what happened. Okay, great. So it removed that. Okay, I put it at the bottom there. Okay, great. Hopefully that fixes our bad merge and we can compile. Oh, so we're missing a switch here. Okay, great. So this is a file. Oh, this was not in the list of changes that I suggested. So sometimes... Um, Perfect. So hopefully that's good. There might be a few others like that where I have yeah switch must be exhaustive. Yeah. So that's the that's the fun part of having so many switches like this for API providers in your code base. Hopefully that covers another one here. All right. We're gonna do that. Uh, return. Oh. Perfect. Oh jeez. Okay, great. Now let's see um, how that works. So that's going to compile. That's really nice. We like to see that. So, you know, a lot of folks, you know, they'll use agents and automate through that loop. I find it's not usually that that big of a deal to, to do that. Um, so let's see how it works. Okay, great. Um, let's open this up. API. Um, we've got the Grok API. Great. So we can add a key. Um, I can I can go ahead and just open this up here. I have my keys set up. Grok. All right. Well, uh, oh, it's XAI. There we go. I've got my key set up. Perfect. I'm gonna add that into here. Validate and save. Great. And here's the list of models that are there for Grok. Fantastic. And we see Grok Mini. Let's do a little test. Hello. Showing the reasoning trace too. That's cool. Fantastic. We just did it. We added support for Grok. We have Grok 3 Mini working with reasoning. And uh, we just did that in a few minutes. And we edited all of those files, which we can review here if you want to see uh, everything that we did. Um, we, we, added, we, added, uh, we edited seven files, created a file. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's a lot of work. There's a lot of stuff. And it happened very quick, all in parallel. 
and I barely spent a dime on uh, any inference because I was able to use AI Studio on the cloud like that. Um, and yeah, so that's it. That's 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 how I build repo prompt. I go back and forth, you know, different tools. Spend very little on inference. Sometimes I'll use the built-in chat a bit. Um, and and yeah, and you know, like that's it. Hope the, this was instructive. Hope it give you a little tour of all the feature set, and hopefully it helps you better understand how it is that I work with this app. Cool. Thank you.